My name is Anna. I'm an English former fashion and textile designer. I moved to Paris, age 23, to work for the French couture house Bauman and stayed for the croissants, the wine, and of course for Philip, a filmmaker who was introduced to me as an Italian, but later turned out to be part of an obscure German-speaking minority from the South Tyrolean Alps. After 10 amazing years, getting married, buying and renovating two homes and having two babies, we decided city life was no longer for us. Philip had been dreaming of buying a chateau since the day we met and finally convinced me to start looking. After seeing only one other place, we came to visit Chateau gonville sur fleur located in a rural village just outside the charming harbour city of Honfleur in Normandy. Despite being in quite poor condition and needing a complete renovation, we immediately fell in love. It wasn't an easy process. There were eight extremely stressful months negotiating with the owners and desperately searching for a bank willing to give us a loan. Only a couple of days before it would have been sold to somebody else, we finally got a green light from a bank. In May 2019, we got the keys to the chateau, our new home. With a tight budget, we had no choice but to do most of the renovations by ourselves. We're learning new skills as we go, building muscles we never knew we had, and getting creative to make the chateau as personal as possible whilst preserving its historic features. Since, it's been 20 months of full-on renovations and starting our new guest house business, which, at least, that was the plan, would help us finance the further stages of renovations. We opened our doors to guests in August 2020, only to shut them one month later as the world closed its borders and France went into lockdown during the global pandemic. We'll continue our mission of rescuing and renovating our chateau for as long as it takes. It's all part of this crazy family adventure and we wouldn't change it for anything. Hi, and welcome to our chateau. We've been overwhelmed by all the views and all the likes we got on our previous videos. And it means a lot to us, especially in times like now where we don't get to see a lot of people. Um, yeah, having you commenting and reacting gives us a real boost. And a lot of comments asked us for a chateau tour, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So come in. So this is Chateau gonville sur en fleur uh, an 18th century chateau built on the remains of a much older fortress from Norman times. We don't know everything about the history of this building, but what we do know is that this place has been built in the 18th century as a hunting lodge, as a place to entertain by some nobleman, maybe from Paris. Uh, and if you look at the architecture, you can tell everything in this place is grand. You can clearly tell that this place was conceived to entertain. This is the 18th century part of the building with the main entrance, a staircase to the second floor, and four beautiful double doors leading into the rooms. Two salons on the right side, a dining room on the left, and a fourth room, which was only split in half at a later point. And then it's pretty much the same in the second floor. Four main rooms, four bedrooms, a small room, maybe for a baby, but nothing else. This was a chateau for entertaining. This was not a chateau for a family. But in the 19th century, we believe, this chateau became a family home. And that's when they added this extension here on the west side with an additional kitchen, a room that we believe being an office, and on the second floor, two more bedrooms, and finally a bathroom. So these documents are actually really precious, aren't they, Philip? Oh yes, uh, we got a box full of documents when we purchased the chateau from the previous owners, and we found amazing treasure in there. Some of these documents are dating back to the 14th century. But they've written in old French and we are not able to decipher them uh, without the help of a historian. Uh, we have some friends that are specialized in the restoration of art and conservation of documents and they will come and help and also tell us how to store them properly because they shouldn't be in a carton like this. So these documents were passed down generations of owners of this chateau and we were given them under the condition that these documents shall stay with the chateau forever. I can't wait until we have time to get um, a historian or an expert to have a look at some of these papers and hopefully to, to discover some of the secrets of our chateau. Look, that's how it was, I think, in 1917, when the previous family bought the chateau. Actually, this is a photocopy of an original postcard 
We found them in a shoebox in a cupboard. That was one of the treasures we found, wasn't it? And in it, there are some original postcards. I love this one because uh, it shows when the previous owners had transformed the chateau into a cider and Calvados um, business, um, which they produced here. I think it was hectares of um, apple trees. Because obviously we're, we're in Normandy and uh, Normandy is famous for its cider and Calvados. And I love, look, that's an old cider label. So we didn't find any bottles of unopened Calvados from that time. Old Calvados is very expensive. It would have been worth a lot. Yeah. And we loved this one so much that it inspired us to uh, use this kind of um, map with the old um, logo of the house as a uh, branding for our guest house and our website. Oh, and I love this one. This is my favourite one, I think. And the idea is we're going to have this um, postcard copied and sent out to all our patrons with a handwritten thank you note as a little gift to our patrons who are helping us. Expect to receive one of these through the post soon. Anyway, back to the tour. So the idea is eventually this room will be um, returned to being a dining room, entertaining space. Um, but for now, it has become our office and a little bit of a um, dumping ground for furniture. And yeah, a lot of people when they come and see the chateau now are kind of in shock when they see that half the wallpaper is falling off the wall and they think that it's been like this and and that it you know was left in ruin uh by the previous owners but actually that's not true is it philip <laughs> no it's not true it was me i spotted an original wall painting behind all these layers of wallpaper and i just couldn't help myself but to investigate further and then we found the green and we found the beautiful design and we never finished or I never finished because we had more important things to do. It is an amazing find, um, but since then, which is almost two years ago, we've had to live with the, <laughs> with the wall in this state, but uh, it's a project that we're really excited to work on in the future. And I love the color, it actually is you know, one of the colours that inspired me for one of our guest rooms. Can you see that? It's all been hand painted and uh, if any of you do know maybe what date this mural could be from, then do let us know in the comments. And another thing that I really love is this secret door that we um, realised was here when you, Philip, uh, took off the wallpaper. I think it's been done in a really clever way so that Basically, the, the door opening is, is cut into the mouldings, so you wouldn't know that it was there, actually. Um, and this would have gone through to probably what was, at uh, one point, the chateau kitchen, and so the servants could come in and out from the kitchen to serve them. And it's again here, you can see it, with this door, which we actually use still, so all of the mouldings continue. And I think the last thing that um, I want to show you in this room is probably the fireplace. So we were really lucky that the owners left us the um, original mirror, which was only one of the original mirrors left. So this is very special. And also this, which is a beautiful um, fire plate, which probably dates back to the 18th century. There's a China man, and I think he's Got some tea over here and a fan and some monkeys and lots of beautiful flowers. And what's so nice in this chateau is the perspective. So from one room that leads into another, because here, for example, I have a really beautiful view onto our breakfast room, which I'm gonna show you now. So this is actually one of our grand salons um, and we currently use it for our guests um, to have breakfast or evening meals and it's a beautiful room because it has so many windows, it's a very light room but it's also really cold because uh, we don't actually currently have guests here so we're not really heating it. Um, I did make a fire earlier but it's um, already gone out 
and it's so expensive to heat a chateau so when we don't have guests we try to save as much as we can. There was a lot to do in this room. Um, obviously we had to do a lot of painting. We had to um, replace some of the windows because they were really in an, a really bad uh, state but we were able to luckily keep the original um, handles, these are spaniolette handles, which are really beautiful. They open like this. So I love that we were able to keep that. These rooms um, actually didn't have any radiators in. We were able to find these reproduction radiators um, that came from England and we were really surprised to realize that they are creating radiators with the same uh, design that matched exactly one of the original radiators that was already in the chateau. Actually, the chateau, when we moved in, it only had, I think, what was it, six radiators? Six, yes. Um, which is crazy considering the size of it and just goes to show how cold it was in the chateau. Um, yeah, I do remember when we first moved in, we were all kind of, it was May and we were all wearing coats and blankets to cover up, it was so cold. So it was really nice to be able to find um, period radiators that sort of felt like they fitted in here. Even though, do you remember, they got delivered and the guy who delivered them left them in the middle of the road. So it was the two of us and the carpenter's son who had to carry uh, four tons of radiators from the streets <laughs> through our garden in into the chateau. Yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare and they are very heavy. So heavy. <laughs> Another thing that we had to replace in here was the marble fireplace. So we were told by the previous owners that the original marble fireplaces were damaged during the Second World War because the chateau was actually occupied during that period by German soldiers. Um, because of course we're in Normandy and we're very close to the landing, um, the landing beaches. It was quite a big job. We didn't think it was going to be. We thought, ah, oh, it's easy. We're just going to have to replace the marble. And uh, but it was. It ended up being a pretty big job, didn't it, Philip? Oh, it was. Finding some marble in the right size was a challenge. And it wasn't the right size. And it wasn't the right size. <laughs> because it ended up being a big job, and we had to get um, a mason friend to help us. Um, to remove some bricks, make the, the chimney a little bit narrower so that this marble would fit. But I think that now that you see it, it looks like it's been there forever and, um, and I really love it. I love this marble, it's really beautiful. Yeah, we found it online. It came from the south of France, from some manor house in the south of France and we got really lucky. I think we paid about 150 euros for these. Yeah. And another nice find was um, this chandelier that we think is 19th century, which we also found online. And I think it looks really beautiful in here because when we bought the chateau, there was nothing really. I mean, most of the beautiful pieces of art and mirrors and chandeliers had all been removed by the previous owners. So we had to kind of start from scratch and, you know, it's taking us some time to find the right pieces, but slowly we're getting there. And another feature I love in this Grand Salon is that it connects into our evening salon with these beautiful glass double doors. You've seen it in the previous episodes and we're almost finished and we'll show it again when it's completely finished. And Philip, do you remember when this was not like this? <laughs> yeah, that, that entrance wasn't always like this. We didn't film at that time, but we did take a couple of pictures and here they are. This chateau has 16 rooms, plus a cellar and an attic space, but it only had two toilets when we arrived. So one of the biggest tasks for us when we started renovating was to install more bathrooms, install a heating system, get electricity to all the floors. We had to find a way to bring in all of those pipes without damaging um, the integrity of the chateau and without changing too much. Um, so the only way to do that was to, to bring them in underneath the um, flagstone on the entrance um, and in here, in through the entrance hallway and under the stairs. Um, that did mean that we had to dig a huge trench and Philip did most of it by hand because we couldn't get any big heavy machinery into this space. Um, I mean, we did have to remove all the tiles that were here, but they were not very old. I think they were only put in in the 30s and they weren't very valuable. So 
um, we took that opportunity to put down this really beautiful Pierre de Bourgogne stone, which is a stone that could have been used in the 18th century. One more massive job that we ended up having to do was that when we came to visit the chateau, these beautiful doors were not actually here anymore. Um, these are the original doors, but they were living in an outbuilding and had been living there for 50 years because the previous owners had um, removed them and blocked up the wall with concrete and created a downstairs shower and toilet room. We knew that that was something that we were definitely going to do was to reinstate those doors because they're so beautiful, but also because you get that double aspect and it's really lovely in the summer. You can open out the doors and go out onto the garden, onto the back garden. So I'm really happy. It was a lot of work to get those um, put back in, but definitely worth it. Um, the only problem we did have was on this door, the hinges were, moved, were removed. So you had to find some, didn't you, online and um, we had to refit those. Um, and there was a lot of cleaning and sanding to remove years and years of paint, um, even on all these beautiful old um, fixtures and fittings. Um, so yeah, they're a li it's a little bit stiff and I'm going to attempt to... Okay, let's... The top one? Have you, have you removed the top one? Yeah, yeah, that one's up. It's this one that is... Oh. Beautiful, that's the view. I can't believe people would have sacrificed this view for, for a toilet. So let's get upstairs. Um, that's where our guest rooms are. Um, we have three rooms that we managed to renovate um, for this last summer to open. And there's another three rooms to renovate. Um, so I, yeah, I think I'm gonna show you the green room. We have three guest rooms, um, and this room, this door leads to um, three further rooms and a bit the the room of doom, which you may have already seen. Um, yeah. You mean it's a bit messy in there? <laughs> in the previous <laughs> video, um, the mess is what's hidden behind this door. Um, but these are the three guest rooms that we have finished. So I thought I'd show you one of them today. Uh, this is the green room. rooms that we've done so far. Um, the green colour was inspired by uh, the green that you saw earlier in the dining room. I was also inspired um, to create my own wallpaper. So this is a design that I, I came up with and it's um, a I made it with a technique called lino printing. Um, so I had to engrave some lino and it's like a bit like block printing but I, I hand printed every piece of paper basically. And I love all of this original 18th century Rococo um, style panelling in this room. It's such a beautiful detail. And what we decided to do in this room, um, because there was always this door, um, but this room here was actually a small bedroom, and we decided to create a bathroom in that bedroom. And uh, one of my favourite features in this bathroom is the cast iron bath that we actually found in the chateau. It was originally here, but it was very damaged, wasn't it, Philip? It was. But we managed to um, restore it, and yeah, and it's a beautiful feature, and it looks out over the, the grounds. It's a perfect spot to run yourself a nice bubble bath and have a nice glass of champagne as you relax and look over the, the front garden. So it has been over 20 months to get to this point and there is still so much to do here. Uh, we have over half of the rooms still left to renovate. So on the next part of the Chateau Tour, I promise that we will show you more of those unfinished rooms as well as the other finished guest rooms and some of the outbuildings which are our future renovation projects. Next time, Anna attempts to upholster a 19th century chair 
as we try to rush to finish the evening salon before our guests arrive. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and if you'd like to watch more videos right now, take a look at our Patreon page and see all the extras we offer to our supporters. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.